so hello friends now in this video we are going with the next part of the bone tumor in, in our previous video we have discussed about osteosarcoma and uh, osteoid osteoma and osteochondroma now in this video we are starting with the next part that is your giant cell tumor okay the next is your giant cell tumor okay so giant cell tumor is characterized by basically multinucleated osteoclast type giant cell randomly and uniformly distributed in a background of mononuclear cells okay like this multinucleated osteoclast cells will be there okay so it is defined it is characterized by the presence of multinucleated osteoclast type giant cell okay and it is randomly and uniformly distributed in a background of mononuclear cells now it is relatively uncommon okay and it is aggressive and it is also have it is also belong to malignant neoplasm okay and it is only seen between 20 to 40 years of age clear and uh, particularly in elderly okay and it may be secondary to irradiation it may be secondary to irradiation so these are the some important points which you have to focus okay 20 to 40 years of age then seen in elderly and secondary to irradiation and it is uh, more often seen in women okay? and cells of origin are the stromal cells primitive stromal cells so these are the important points which you have to focus okay giant cell tumor multinucleated malignant then 20 to 40 years of age elderly secondary to irradiation women and stromal cells are involved now coming to the pathogenesis of giant cell tumor so the neoplastic cells of giant cell tumor are primitive osteoblast precursors and form only a minority of tumors okay the major uh, cells of the tumors are non neoplastic osteoclast so the major is your osteoclast there may be some osteoblast the, but the majority is your osteoclast clear and here you will find high level of rank ligand okay this is another important characteristic now coming to the morphology of giant cell tumor okay so what is the basic morphology of the giant cell tumor so site mainly is your epiphysis okay epiphysis is the most common site which is involved here okay now coming to the next part after the site that is epiphysis then uh, it may extend into metaphysis of long bone also but to mainly involve your epiphysis then bones involved so any bone can be involved majority is your nearia bone clear now the next points some other points that is uh, gross so they are large tumor okay they are large tumor clearly circumscribed and frequently undergo cystic changes and cut surface is seen as soft and red brown soft and red brown without bone or calcification okay and one more important point that is numerous hemorrhagic area will give an appearance of spawns full of blood okay the appearance will be as spawns full of blood so this is a very important point which you have to remember okay that is a sponge full of blood now the next point that is your morphology next point in morphology so a sponge full of blood is very important okay now coming to the next uh, microscopy so in microscopy two types of cell will be fine okay the first one is your mononuclear cells and the second one is your multinucleated giant cell which we have discussed okay so multinucleated giant cell will be there and mononuclear cells will be there and diagnosis of malignancy depends upon the morphology of mononuclear cells rather than that of the multinucleated giant cells so this is important mononuclear cells okay clear so this is about uh, giant cell tumor once again revising and uh, the giant cell tumors such as your first is your uh, that is multinucleated osteoclast mainly malignant potential 20 to 40 years of age elderly secondary to irradiation women and stromal cells are involved osteoclast involved morphology it involves uh, epiphysis mostly knee then large tumor soft and red brown and sponge full of blood appearance then two types of cells mononuclear cells and multinuclear giant cells on the basis of the nuclear morphology of the mononuclear cells okay now the uh, diagnosis is com confirmed now moving to the next okay moving to the next part that is your uh, radiological appearance okay so it produces uh, a lytic lesion and uh, grows sorry it produces lytic lesions clear and uh, 
grows slowly and expands the bone and destroys the overlying cortex. Clear? And it will also give soap bubble appearance on radiography. Soap bubble appearance on radiography. So this is important question. Soap bubble appearance on radiography. Clear? Now clinical course. So what are the clinical features and clinical course of this disease? Okay, it comes to clinical course of the disease. So pain will be there. Okay. Arthritis like symptom will be there. Pain, arthritis as symptom. There may be micro fractures sometimes. Okay. Pathological fracture will be there. Now, biological behavior. So all giant cell tumor must be considered a potentially malignant because they can metastasize. Okay, as giant cell have included under benign tumor, but they have potential to metastasize. Okay. So this is about your giant cell tumor in short. Now moving to the next tumor that is your uh, chondrosarcoma. Chondrosarcoma. Okay. This is again a malignancy, chondrosarcoma. So discussing some important points about chondrosarcoma. So chondrosarcoma is malignant bone tumor which is characterized by production of neoplastic cartilage. So it is characterized by production of neoplastic cartilage. Okay. They are in osteosarcoma, that is characterized by osteoid cartilage production like that. This is characterized by the production of neoplastic cartilage. It is usually seen around 40 years or older. Okay, And here, males are twice frequently affected in compared to females. Okay, Males and female ratio is 2 is to 1. Getting my point? Okay. Now, uh, coming to the classification of this chondrosarcoma so according to anatomic site it is classified as central tumors or peripheral tumor okay and 90 percent is central tumor it, inv it involves your in, uh, medulla okay and on the basis of microscopic again defined to conventional clear cell d defense mesenchymal like this now coming to the most important part that is morphology of these tumors okay so conventional conventional se sorry central conventional chondrosarcoma it consists of malignant hyaline malignant hyaline and mixoid cartilage okay it consists of malignant hyaline and mixoid cartilage now location when we talk about location so it commonly arises in central medullary cavity of your pelvic bones your shoulder your ribs and long bones okay sorry Sorry, sorry. Okay, so it uh, sorry for this time. So it mainly involves your central medullary cavity of pelvic bones, shoulder, rims, and long bones. Now the next point coming to the gross of this disease. Okay, so in gross you will find same large bulky tumor is there. Okay, nodules of grey white. Okay, nodules of grey white. Uh, with translucent glistening areas will be there okay, representing your cartilage like a structure now the next point after this that uh, on cut section you will get mixoid film okay mixoid yeah mixoid film then there will be a spotty calcification will be there on cut section okay there will be central areas of necrosis on cut section so these three features are also found on cut section these three features are on cut section clear now on microscopy it consists of malignant cartilage cell in various stages of its maturity okay we will divide it into first is your grade one mild hypercellularity will be there mitotic figures are rare then grade two moderate cellularity will be there okay then grade three marked cellularity marked hypercellularity will be there okay Condocyte here, so extreme pleomorphism. Their microsis are frequent here. Okay, so these are the features of the uh, chondrosarcoma. Now coming to the radiological appearance. So here, uh, these tumors so so the tumor in medullary cavity. Okay, so there is presence of tumor in medullary cavity with poorly defined borders. Clear? Yeah. And here you will find ring-like ossification. So ring-like ossification is a characteristic feature of this. Okay. Here, yeah. so bubble were characteristic feature of giant cell tumor. Then clinical feature is same, pain will be there, progressive enlarging masses will be there. Yeah. So this is about your 
third, that is your osteochondroma. One and the last important part, last important that is remaining is your Ewing, Ewing sarcoma or primitive neuroectodermal tumor. Okay, that is known as Ewing sarcoma. So Ewing sarcoma family of tumor is primary malignant, a small round cell tumor of bone and soft tissue. Okay, so it is the a small round cell tumors of the bone and soft tissue. It is uncommon tumor and constitute about six to ten percent of primary malignant tumors. Clear? Yeah. And mostly involving ten to fifteen years of age. Okay, and about eighty percent are seen in patients younger than twenty years. Clear? Yeah. And most frequently in boys in compared to girls. Now coming to the categories, so it has it is uh, it consists of basically two tumors that differ only in their degree of neural differentiation. Okay. And this didn't signal no clinical significance. There is no clinical significance, and they are giving sarcoma. And the second is your primitive neuroectodermal tumor. It is PNET, primitive neuroectodermal tumor. Okay, so giving sarcoma are undifferentiated tumors. They are undifferentiated tumors, and primitive neuroectodermal tumors are with some grade of neural. Differentiation. Okay, so PNET is with neural differentiation, and Ewing sarcoma are undifferentiated tumors. Clear? Yeah. Now, coming to the etiology and pathogenesis. So it arises from multipotent mesenchymal. It arises from multipotent mesenchymal stem cells. Clear? Yeah. Chromosomal abnormalities are there is translocation of your EWS gene on chromosome number twenty-two. Yeah, so this is important point. Then your E W S one, okay, the fusion of E W S one gene to your F L I one gene occurs here. Okay, so this is important. M C question, and this fusion will lead to activation of C mic. Okay, C mic activation will be there. So till the result is Ewing sarcoma, then uh, primitive neurodermal tumor. Okay, Ewing sarcoma, primitive. Neurodermal tumor here, neural differentiation present here, undifferentiated tumor. Then a small round cell tumor, six to ten percent, ten to fifteen years. Then boys, then within chymal stem cell, EWS gene mutation, fusion, and C mic activation below there. Now coming to its morphology. Getting my points? Okay, coming to its morphology. So location, it involves a diaphysis. So first tumor that is involving mainly your diaphysis of the medullary capsule, the long bone. Okay, and it involves many long bones or flat bones sometimes. Okay, it arises in diaphysis. Okay, they will diffusely infiltrate. It diffusely infiltrate the cortex. Okay. Now, soft, grayish white appearance will be there with a wide range of hair hemorrhage or necrosis. Clear. Now coming to the microscopy. So tumor cells are about twice the size of a lymphocyte. Clear. Cytoplasm, scant or little. And appears clear because of glycogen rich. Okay, it is rich in glycogen, so cytoplasm is scanned and it appears clear. And this is an important diagnostic feature of the this. So this is very important. A scanned and clear due to the presence of glycogen. Clear point. Now this stain positive with your pass. Okay, pass staining is your positive. Clear. And when you one more important point that is Homer. Right, rosette will be here. Okay, homer right, rosette will be formed there. Okay, they consist of tumor cells arranged in a circle about a central fibrillary space. Okay, and this is indicative of neural differentiation. Okay, and here on radiography you will find onion skin pattern. Okay, so this is your uh, and one more point clinical features. So painful enlarging masses will be there, and here systemic features are also present, and they can be mistaken for infection like osteomyelitis. Okay, so this is all about your Ewing sarcoma, and this is all about your bone tumors. Thank you.